Thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> How's everybody hanging in there being at home all the time, 24 seven? It's, it's lots of fun, you know? Mm -hmm. Figuring yeah. out all the different places you can work in one house. <laughs> right? <laughs> How many places can you vacation in, in your home, right? All right, so um, so we are going to start with me sharing my screen um, so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, and we're gonna um, we're gonna go into into command. So we're gonna talk about um, smart plans tonight, and this is like really. Fast becoming one of my favorite, favorite features of command because um, there's so much you can do and I can't wait to show you. So I'm excited. Make sure you take notes. Um, all right. So smart plans. Smart plans is like the best way to um, get in touch and stay in touch with your sphere. So you can automate a lot of your tasks using smart plans. So to get to smart plans, um, we're going to come over here to the, the um, smart plans applet right over here and click on that and open smart plans. And you'll see that um, I have a couple already or a few in there. Um, and so I'm going to kind of give you a little tour around here first, and then um, we'll we'll do a little bit deeper dive into um, each part of each part of Smart Plans. Um, so when you come into Smart Plans, you'll see up here. You, um, these are my Smart Plans, and then next to that you have the library, the library of Smart Plans. So if you click on that, um, you're going to see that KW has smart plans already built out for you. So we have a bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, an eight by eight contact, quarterly call plan, midterm nurture, long-term nurture, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the very cool thing about all of these is that it will tell you how many steps. So let's look at the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. Um, it has three steps. It's a 15 day duration and it's one touch. And if you want to see what the steps are, all you have to do is click on the arrow next to view steps and it's going to open it for you and you can see exactly what's going to happen um, for this smart plan. So let's look at this eight by eight one, for example. It has 15 steps, it's a 50 day duration and it's eight touches. So if I click on view steps, I can see all of the steps that the smart plan contains um, in the eight by eight. So you can take a look at each one of these smart plans and see what exactly it does. And um, I'm gonna show you how on some of these, you can go in and edit those steps a little bit or customize them a little bit better. So in order for you to be able to use any of these smart plans um, in your command, the first thing you have to do is add the smart plan. So you'll see how over here on the biweekly neighborhood nurture, the add smart plan is already grayed out it's because I've already added it to my smart plans up here. So if I wanted to add this eight by eight contact, all I have to do is click on add smart plan. I can change the name of the smart plan if I want to. I'm going to hit apply and voila, it's going to be in my smart plans and here it is, my eight by eight contact. So now that I have it in my smart plan, I can, I can have, I can, I can do more with it. I can assign it to contacts. Okay. So as we go along the top up here, um, you'll see the name of the, of the uh, smart plan. 
this is going to tell you how many contacts you have assigned to this one. So um, I created this Tech Cafe one, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. I'm the only one subscribed to it. It's an 11 day long plan. It's got three touches. It is currently activated, but I can, um, I will in the future have the uh, option of turning it on or off. Um, and then here um, under actions, I have some options. I can add a contact. I can copy the smart plan. I can go in and edit it or I can um, delete it. So this one can't be deleted because I have people assigned to it. Um, if you do not have anybody assigned to a smart plan, then your delete button will be active and you can, you can do that. Um, so let's look at the eight by eight contact one that we just, that we talked about. Your edit button is highlighted. <clears throat> what this means is that you can actually go in and edit the, um, edit that, particular smart plan. So you can add some customization or take some pieces out of it if you wanted to. Um, and you'll see in my bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, that pen is grayed out. You cannot um, alter this, this uh, smart plan at all. So, so that's the difference, okay? Um, so <clears throat> across the top up here, you're gonna see people plans, referral plans, opportunity plans, listing plans. These will all exist at, at one time or another. Um, they are, there's not anything in there uh, for the moment, um, but just know that some of these are gonna, they're gonna be live at some point. So, so what does it look like when you create a, um, a smart plan? So I created this Tech Cafe one, and I'm gonna show you the piece of this to it. And then I'm gonna show you how exactly I created it. So I did this one for our purposes tonight. Um, first, it's gonna send you an email and it's gonna say, hi, uh, Teresa or Brittany or you know whoever, um, Christy, I'm so glad you came to Tech Cafe tonight, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's my spiel, right? Uh, then it, it's gonna delay for three days. And in three days, it's gonna send you a text message. Hi, Brittany or Christy or Teresa or you know, whoever. Um, how are your smart, smart plans coming along? Blah, 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 blah. Then it's gonna delay for two more days. And in two, two more days, it's gonna give me a reminder um, in my tasks that I need to call you. And I wrote a description of kind of assuming I was gonna call and leave you a message, right? Hey, I'm calling to see if you started your smart plan yet. Let me know how I can help you get going. This is a great way to stay in touch with your database. And I gave myself a day of grace. Um, theoretically, it should say today, right? But I gave myself an extra day. I set another delay of five days. And in five days, you're going to go onto my quarterly call plan. So I'm going to call you once a quarter and say, hey, have you created smart plans yet? Hey, what smart plans have you created? Okay, so this is one way of me staying in touch with your database, or me with you in this case. So how did I make that all happen? Let's go back to smart plans. Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna back up for just one quick second. Um, and there's one thing that uh, everybody should check before you start creating smart plans and sending smart plans out. You're gonna come up to where your name is, the down arrow and settings. Click on settings. This is gonna take you to see all of the apps that you have connected to your command. And you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says 
command email, okay? I want you to click on manage. And I want to make I want you to make sure that your sender name is your name and that your reply to um, email address is set properly. So Teresa, this is probably where your um, emails are not set up properly. Well, it, it is. It has my name and it has my KW email. Okay, interesting. Uh, in that case, you and I need to connect and I need to get this over to our regional tech person. Okay. Okay? Uh-huh. Sure. So, so by, by default, it should have your name and your correct email address, but you want to just go and double check that. Um, and by the way, in case you didn't see it, um, see it on the screen, you have um, 5,000 emails to send out a month via your smart plans. So if you didn't want to create a MailChimp account and you don't want to connect a MailChimp account um, and go through all of that, you can create smart plans for whatever you need and it'll use your command email. Eventually, we're going to have a um, command email for any email that we want to send out, but for right now, it only works for smart plans, which include your neighborhood nurture nurtures. Okay, so we are, we are back to smart plans. Up here in the right hand, on the right hand side of the screen, I have a create button. Amy? I'm gonna click, yes. Sorry, where where were you? I was just trying to, I got stuck. So to scroll okay. down to the, the the manage the email, the where was that at really quickly? Okay, so it's up here under your name with the down arrow, you'll click that and settings. Okay. And then uh, it'll open the settings and you'll uh, command email is all the way at the bottom. Okay, okay, gotcha. Thank you, sorry. Oh. Hey, yeah, no problem. Yes. That's where I send out all my emails from is through the smart plans. And that's how the agent numbers coming up. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I talked about that with our, our regional tech trainer yesterday. Uh -huh. And um, she wanted you to check what we just did the, uh, under the settings for command email. Um, and she said, if that is correct, then um, I'm going to I'm going to uh, reach out to her again tomorrow and let her know so that she can uh, get somebody in their tech department to look at it. Perfect. Okay. So yeah. thank you. Working on it. <laughs> and how do you get that not to show up in people's junk mail? It just you can't. You can't. Um, the reason it's showing up in somebody's junk mail is because it has agent and then a number. Okay. Um, it's not your name. And so, um, so it's looking for that type of email to put in the junk folders. Okay. Okay. Um, so hopefully once we get that corrected for you, you won't have that problem anymore. I wonder if any of it, anybody else is having that problem. I don't know. It's just me. I don't know. I don't know. And I would encourage all of you to um, put me in your contacts and add me to all of your smart plans because one, I can be a good sounding board um, if you want, you know, another pair of eyes on what you've done. And I can also see if um, your, your, your name and email address and reply to address is coming up correctly. So, um, anyway, okay, so let's get back to um, creating. So, we have the green button here um, that says create on the right hand side. So, you're going to click on that and you're going to, um, you're going to create uh, your smart plan. So you need to give it a name. So I'm going to say Tech Cafe 2 and apply. Now, right now, um, there, there are no trigger events that you can select from to cause a smart plan to start. However, it is something that is coming in the future.
probably not too far in the future, where a trigger event could be um, somebody who attended an open house that you did or somebody that um, emailed you from a Facebook ad or you know something of, of, of that sort. Um, at the moment, the only way you can get these um, smart plans to start going and start start moving is by adding them manually uh, in your contacts or to your contacts. So, um, and we'll, we'll talk about how you do that as well. So, so here are your actions, okay? Your action buttons are right here. Um, think of them as uh, your widgets like you, like you do on your website. So we have a create a task, make a call, send an email, send a text message, create a delay, um, add to a smart plan and restart flow. So under new action, let's say that we met at an open house and um, I'm gonna send you an email. So I'm gonna click send email and I'm gonna thank you for coming to the open house. So one, two, three, Main Street. I wonder if that address really exists. One day I'm gonna to have to look it up because we use it for everything. Um, you'll see that the reply to you is my um, KW email address, which I have set up in command. And then I, I can write the body of my email. So there's some fun things that you can do here. Um, so I'm gonna say, hi, and I want to personalize this because I don't want you to feel like you're just, um, you know, getting what everybody else gets. And if I click on this F, the, the arrow next to the F, I can choose their first name, their last name. I can put their email address, phone number, birth date, home anniversary, whatever, whatever it is that I'm looking for. So I'm going to do first name. So hi, first name. And then I'm going to say, you know, Thank you for coming to the open house, blah, 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 right? Hey, Amy. Um, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's yeah. pretty cool how you could put like that first name. So then when you hit the contacts, like your list and you say like add 50, will it automatically put in their first names? It will. Oh, cool. Yeah, it will. Okay. Yep. Um, so there's some other features in here and I just, you know, I encourage you to kind of explore these. You can put a hyperlink um, in your emails as well. So if I wanted to send you a hyperlink of um, 123 Main Street, right, and then um, I can put the link target. So the link target would be the link address. So let me put this in context. Let's say that I created a landing page for 123 Main Street um, and I published that and then you came to my open house for 123 Main Street and now I'm following up with you and I want you to have the, the, the picture of the, or, or the link to the house again because you expressed interest and you really liked it. So now I'm gonna send you to the landing page, right? So you can look at the pictures again. So I'm gonna put that address right here where it says add link, okay? So then it'll add your link address right here for 123 Main Street. Cool, so now um, I'm gonna set a delay and I'm gonna say, if I even heard from you in two days, okay. Um, and by the way, just for the sake of, of doing it, you should uh, click the save button, the, the green check mark. Um, you don't want to lose any of, any of the work that you're doing by accident. Um, so I'm setting my delay. Cool. In two days, if I haven't heard from you, I'm going to send you a text message, right? So I click send SMS and here's my SMS. Now, I have a Twilio account. I have connected that to um, command. And so Twilio, because I have it connected, 
will now send these text messages on the day, on day three, right, where it says right here, day three, it's Twilio is going to automatically send this met, uh, this uh, text message out. Hey, Angela. So hello. <laughs> um, if you don't have a Twilio, then what's going to happen is this is going to show up on your task list, the, your to do list. And I'm just going to say that um, the office has a Twilio account. I have my own Twilio account. I know Ange has a Twilio account. This is a very inexpensive thing to add in if, um, if, if you're going to really use it and use it with your smart plans. If not, you can just grab your phone and, and send the text yourself. Um, you can type in the text message. So just following up um, from the open house, right? Da, 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 da. Um, if you have a Twilio, cool. You can put all your text in there. If you don't, you can just put a, a reminder note for yourself, whatever works. Again, you can put in the merge fields, right? So I can select their first name. So if I'm sending this out through Twilio, then it's going to say, hey, so-and-so, hey, Brittany, just following up with you on the open house at 123 Main Street, blah, blah, blah. Would you like me to send you more information or do you have any questions or, you know, whatever that conversation might look like, okay? So you're gonna click save. Now, I'm gonna set another delay, okay? I've given you now uh, one, two opportunities to reach out to me. So I'm gonna set another two day delay Okay, and in two days, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up the phone and call you. Okay, you've seen my name a few times now, so let's, let's have a conversation. So in your task name, you're gonna name this whatever's gonna make sense to you, right? Call Brittany about 123 Main Street or uh, whatever that looks like. So call, Blank, blank, blank. And your task description, this is a great place where you can add a person's first name, their phone number, um, their last name. If you have 23 Jennifers in your contact database, you want to know which Jennifer you're calling. Um, and, and I would encourage you to put their email address in there because if they act, if you actually get them on the phone and they say, oh my gosh, you know what? I, I didn't even see that email. You can say, oh, no problem. Let me just go ahead and resend that to you and you can do it right there on the fly. You don't have to go to the contact. You don't have to look it up. You've got it right there, okay? So you can also write your script in here. If you have a script that you're gonna use, you can throw that in here. Um, Hyperlink, again, you can use the space to put a hyperlink to your landing page if you have one for 123 Main Street. All right, so I'm gonna save this. And now I want to add you to just a regular smart plan, okay? So now I'm gonna click add to smart plan. I'm gonna scroll down and I have all the different options of smart plans that I have added to my library. So now I wanna add you to my biweekly neighborhood nurture, assuming I have your address, or your quarterly call plan, or you know, whatever it is that you want that you want to do next, whatever it is that you want to happen next, okay? And click save. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna point this out very quickly. It is only 6.25, we started at six o'clock, we've answered questions and we've gone through um, a smart plan that I built, what it looks like, 
and then we built out a SMART plan, all in less than 25 minutes. These are easy to do. Don't overthink it. Um, and it's going to automate so much for you. So now that I have all of this built out, what do I do with it? So I'm gonna save it. And I'm gonna to come to my, I'm gonna come back to um, my regular, my, my smart plan screen, okay? And now I wanna add some people to, to some of my smart plans. So I'm gonna come in here to contacts. And there's a few ways that you can do this. Um, <clears throat> you can go through each person, okay? Sorry, Ange, I'm gonna pick on you tonight. You can go through each person and come up here to Smart Plans, click on that. I'm gonna add Angela to a Smart Plan. So I'm gonna select my Tech Cafe, the one that I built out, and I'm gonna confirm. And, and by the way, I can start that now or I can start it on any particular date that I want, okay? So I'm gonna start it now, confirm. It's gonna show me all of the steps um, that are going to happen. I'm gonna say, yep, that's what I want you to do. And uh, Angela, you should actually get an email from me very soon saying, hey, thanks for coming to Tech Cafe. Let's see. Hi, Angela, so glad you came to Tech Cafe tonight. I hope you learned about how you can implement smart plans into your database. I can't wait to see what you create. Make sure you put me on your contacts and add me to your smart plans so I too can get your awesome emails. Thanks again for coming. And there you and have it. Add your name and your title and then yep. obviously the unsubscribe at the bottom, which I yes. won't hit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so now, I know that, that smart plan is working, right? She got the email. In a couple of days, she's gonna get a text message from me saying, hey, um, you know, where's your, where's your smart plans? How's it going? And so on and so forth. The other way you can do this is if you um, select, if you select all your contacts, you can add them to a bulk, um, smart plan. Here's what I would tell you about that. Um, select bulk action. Unless this is a smart plan that you created to introduce yourself or to, um, to market a particular property to everybody, I would be very, very careful about adding people in bulk to a smart plan. Um, well, hang on one second. Yeah. Unless it's a 36 touch. So if you're okay. doing your 36 touch for everyone for the whole year, you know, you have happy Easter, happy birthday, sure. you know, or whatever. I'm, I wouldn't, can you put in there, send a happy birthday thing? I know yes. they have a happy birthday smart plan, but could you add it to that? Is Can you customize it like that? Yeah. So, um, when we let's see so when you when you take um a smart plan from the library and you add it to your smart plans if you have the highlighted pencil over here angela you have the ability to um edit that smart plan some okay. of them allow it some of them don't your quarterly call plan does not uh the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture does not well, I'm wondering if in a step, so let's go back to your test plan, for example. Could you put up, um, could you put in there, send happy birthday and it will just know their birthday based off of their contact? Um, let me see. Let me, yeah. Contact birthday. 
So if I add you to my test plan and um, I have your birthday in, mm -hmm. in the contact, then yes, it will send you a happy birthday. Now I bet though, because I ran into this, um, if you tried to put everyone on a 36 touch in bulk, I wonder if it, if there's no birthday, it's going to give you an error and not include that on any of the smart plan. Cause I ran into that the other day with Twilio. It said I didn't have a phone number for them. It was just a command wasn't updated. It was in my phone. Um, mm -hmm. Puts them into the tasks. Cause I have a bunch of things like, like a bunch of contacts without email addresses and birthdays and it just puts them are in they tasks. On, are they in smart plans though? Um, yes, because I, I um, have that bi-weekly, um, you know, neighborhood, and it sends it to people's emails. So the people that don't have emails, they're all in my tasks as uncompleted. And then I, I put people on a birthday smart plan today, and the people's birthdays that I don't have that went to tasks and completed. Okay, cool. That's cool. Um, yeah, hey, that's really cool. And the um, Teresa, just a, a word of advice: a biweekly um, neighborhood nurture might be a little much if someone's not thinking about doing something soon. I would probably mm -hmm. stick to monthly, and then move them to biweekly after, or you know, when someone's getting ready to get in the market or just kind of wants to check it out, or someone that really loves real estate. Okay. Um, because you don't want them to unsubscribe because if they unsubscribe, then they unsubscribe from everything. Yeah. Cause I had like most of my contacts on there and now it says only 89 are on there. Yeah. They might've unsubscribed. I think you get a notification when they unsubscribe though. Correct. Well, it you just should. shows up in the timeline, but how do I change that? Do I just, um, how do I get that smart plan off everybody then and, question. Amy. and change it to monthly? Um, so you can go to, um, under my smart plans. You know, I love Zoom and everything, but, um, it's hard sometimes to get you guys out of the way when I'm trying to share a screen. <laughs> um, okay. or you can just delete it. Oh, no, you can't. No, you can't. But, um, I think you can see. do it if you go to contacts, go to contacts. I wonder if you can do it in bulk. Um, so Oops, when you have, when, when you have, look, when you have people in a, in a smart plan, if I click on the I, it shows me who's on the smart plan and I can select all and unsubscribe them. Select all and confirm unsubscribe. Yep. Okay. And then move them over That's, to the monthly one. Right. Except the monthly one will send right away unless you push it out until. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. So depending on when they just got it, make sure that you're going to start it and you don't want to by monthly go yesterday and then this today, you know. Oh, it, okay. Select all. It, it's only doing a few at a time. 20 at a time. That's, okay. And that's command. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a limitation. You can set how many you can see at a time. I believe yeah. 50 is the most. Well, I'm not sure that that actually applies um, in in this. And oh, it does, right. What it, it, it does sorry. apply in it does apply in contacts. You can see right. the 50 contacts. Can you time. undo them in bulk on contacts? Will you go there and see? Um, Cause you can put it on from there. So I wonder if you can take it off from there. Let's see. Um, add to smart plan, but no. Okay. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. You can click look add at to smart plan and, and see. Yeah, it's only going to let you add it. Mm -hmm. 
And it doesn't look like you have the option of starting at a certain time. Well, no, if, if I select, then I have okay. start on the following day, or I can have stagger over the next few days. So if I'm doing, if I'm adding everybody to a quarterly call plan, for example, I don't want everybody to show up in my task list today. Um, so I can stagger them and I can do a num number of contacts per day. Can be so, whatever time. Yep. So Teresa, this would be perfect for what you experienced when you sent out that um, mass email or text and people started emailing you back and you said it was really overwhelming because everyone yeah. was doing it all at once. That's how you would do it is like 10 contacts a day and a couple of them will will respond, you know. Right. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. So now I deleted everybody off that bi-weekly and I'm going to put them on a monthly, but I don't know who unsubscribed. Shall I just resend it to everybody and let it, them It won't matter because if they unsubscribed, then the system knows that. Oh, okay. Yep. And so you have this bell up here at the top. That is your notifications and it should show you in your notifications who has unsubscribed. Okay. Um, but, oh, it says so, all caught up. Okay, well, um, okay. so two, two things to know. One is, as of right now, if somebody unsubscribes from your emails, they've unsubscribed permanently. So it doesn't matter what kind of smart plan you put them on, they are not going to receive it. And number two, the same exact thing applies to Twilio. If you send a bulk text message, like the ones that we send from the office, um, if you reply with, I think it's stop, then that unsubscribes you permanently from that, um, those text messages. So my advice to you is if you're going to start sending out text messages, make sure you start with a text message that says, hi, this is Angela Thompson with KW. Uh, this is my Twilio text number and Please, I, I would ask that you please do not unsubscribe as this will permanently unsubscribe you from all of my communications via text or however you want to word that, um, whatever makes sense to you. And the same, what it, I, would, I would encourage you to do the same with your emails. Um, just let people know, if you unsubscribe, I understand, however, just know that you will not receive any communications from me like ever again until command makes those adjustments if they do. And I don't know that. So those are the two things I would, I would um, caution you to do before you start really over communicating with your people. Amy? Yes. Is there a way that we can send video messages that are like pre-recorded and uploaded on a smart plan aside from um, email or can we even do email I mean, you could probably do a bomb bomb link maybe but you'd have to integrate bomb bomb but so let's go in to um this one that i created for tech cafe which is all nicely built out um so on email, you can insert a link. So if I wanted to um, send you a link to a house or a video or something like that, I need to give the link a title. Um, and then I can add your, your link address right here. So I can um, name it whatever I want. I could name it one, two, three Main Street, even though the link might be to a YouTube video. Yeah, you can name it whatever you want anything you want. Um, and this is really handy and very useful for landing pages. So creating landing pages and inserting those into your communications. You can do this on emails and you can do it on text messages. Um, you, can, you can insert these links. So at this point, Angela, there's not a way to 
insert a video that I know of. Um, yeah, this is your text color, text size, bullet points, you know, just regular, regular stuff. Um, and so what I think what I would do at this point is if you wanted to send a video is upload that video to a landing page and then create a landing page for that video with whatever it is that you wanted to talk about and use that landing page as more of a blog or a vlog um, instance. You can then put the link to that landing page into your email or text message or both. Um, and I feel like you're accomplishing more than one thing there at, at a time. You are getting that information out and you are sending them to something that is still branded to you. So when they open the link, it's clearly Angela Thompson and it's your video and it's, you know, whatever. So on landing pages, you can absolutely create videos and insert videos. Does that help? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I wonder how, I know it integrates with BombBomb, so there, I bet it when I integrate my BombBomb, I can get that part in there. Yeah. Yep. Cool. What did you say? BombBomb? BombBomb. Yeah. It's a video, it's a video software thing and then um, mass sending email thing and then it takes you to the video and what it also does is it makes the video a GIF because GIFs or motion, um, motion, whatever on the email is a lot more likely to get clicked than just a someone's face is still video with a play button. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's like, well, I have a family reunion or mega camp or something discount supposedly, so I pay thirty a month for it. What is it normally? I I don't know. Probably not much more. I probably got five bucks off or something, I would assume, because it's a pretty cheap product it, or inexpensive. Hmm. That's what Patrick uses on his emails when he sends out the video. A lot of people use it, but yeah. Awesome. This is you great. You can also just record a video on your phone. Just saying. Well, so well, then you're texting it, right? No. no, no, no. I, you record you're... the video on your phone. What are you talking about? I recorded a video on my phone, and um, yeah. and command wouldn't take the it wouldn't accept the video file for a landing page. Oh, so um, okay. So let me answer Angela's question first, and then I'll answer yours, Brittany. Um. Angela, you can record a video through your camera app and just record the video there. Um, well, right, but BombBomb sends it out in mass and turns it into a GIF. And that, I get that. Because that's what you do is you still record the video on your yeah. phone or whatever. Yeah. And then you just put um, here a landing page or something else. Right. And, but, you know, just know that for, for anybody who's really watching their expenses right now. Um, there are also some iPhone apps that allow you to um, do videos and GIFs and things like that. They require a little bit more hands-on on your part than BombBomb Bomb does, but I'm just trying to get some alternatives. That's all. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and I was thinking um, like if you could do a, a happy birthday video and it's generic enough that right. for everyone and it's going to make that person feel a little special or whatever, you know? Of course. And yes, we are cutting expenses. And if you don't get a return on the expense, you shouldn't have it. Yep. At least four me. times. Yep. Uh, Brittany, the, the way that you can get around the YouTube or, or the uh, video thing on landing pages, um, when you drop in the video, it's going to ask you for a website or a URL to go retrieve that video from. So what you can do is create um, a YouTube page for yourself. It can be private. You don't have to, you know, put yourself out to the world if you don't want to. But just create um, 
a YouTube page or Vimeo page. Uh, is it Vimeo? Yeah, I think it's Vimeo. Um, just somewhere where you can upload your video to and then grab a link to drop into the landing page. Yeah, and I that's what I ended up doing, but it was because it said to it said to put the URL or it said upload the file, like it said upload a video file. So oh, I was just okay. saying every which way I even converted the file from like AVA to whatever, all the different ways that you can convert the and it wouldn't take the file. Mm -hmm. So then I ended up doing a YouTube page, but first I tried it in a um Google, it was like a Google Drive link and it won't yeah. accept Google Drive links either. So there's, it's like very, um, very particular about what it will, I was just kind of throwing that out there. So you know what, that's really good to know. And I'll take that back to Leslie, our regional tech, because um, it could be very well be that that's just not um, a, function, a function yet, right? That it's there but it's just not available for use yet. So I will definitely take that back to her. Uh, so thanks for letting me know. You're welcome. I, I worked on it for like three hours before, before I was like, what is this? But I got oh, no. it figured out. <laughs> no, I'm I mean, yeah, I'm just saying, I worked on it for a long time, so I didn't want somebody else to be sitting there like, why isn't this happening? So Yeah, yeah, I get it. Amy, do you mind? Uh, we have a little bit of time. Can you go over landing pages? Like how we could sure. use a landing page with this? Yeah, definitely. Like making them is super easy. I guess I'm wondering what else can it do besides... Or how do you capture people's information on it? Because I know there's a little workaround around that. Um, so if you're gonna, if you, um, landing pages, um, landing pages are standalone websites, if you will. Okay. Um, so to create one, um, here's let's see. To create one, you're going to create a new site and as a standalone page. So I'm going to um, I'm going to open this one that I I did the other day. Um, so you can you can create these landing pages um, for a listing you can create them for oh, this this one is not the best one. Um, is there oh, oh go ahead sorry i was going to ask is there a maximum number of landing pages we can make not that i know of okay i i mean i haven't heard anybody say anything about that um i'm going to use ricky's listing again um, so you can create landing pages for just about anything that you want. Uh, there's, there's no hard and fast rule about a landing page. The key to capturing information is to put the lead form on there. So this is Ricky's listing on uh, Jackson Gap way. Um, and so I created this as uh, a landing page for a listing. So I drag listing in here. When you do that, it asks for the MLS information. So I typed in the address and it pulled everything in from the MLS. So you'll see it, it has um, the information about square feet, bedrooms, bathrooms, when it was built, about the property, and then all the pretty pictures. Um, and I can scroll through them. Um, and then the details and the features, the map, and then here's the lead capture form. So is there a way that we could have them put in their information to see information? No. Like enter it here and then we'll let you in and then I get their information. Nope, there is not, not okay. yet. Okay. 
Yeah. And you could also so, use this for open houses when we're allowed to do open houses again. You can have that absolutely. lead captured only and maybe a picture of the house or something. Yep. And then have them enter in their information. It goes straight into command, correct? That is correct. Can you have it, the um, lead capture part, can you assign it a tag and right away, like have it automatically tag in command, open house 9365 South Jackson Gapway? Um, yes. You can, as it's, as it's capturing the information, it will automatically tag it for you. Yep. <gasps> How okay. do you have it tagged? Does it tag it with um, the lead form name or what? Yeah, so, so this one says Tech Cafe listing. If I were to put my information in here, it's going to put the information into command with the tag Tech Cafe listing. Could we so, test it? Um, yeah. Uh, like send me the link and I'll go there and it'll put, well, I'm already in there. Um, hold on, I got, I got to send you the link. Well, I'm already, I'll put someone else, I'll put Mickey Mouse in, since I'm already in there. No, you need sure Mickey Mouse is in there too. Yeah, probably. Um, Brittany's new listing can be in there too soon. Do you have a new listing, Brittany? We'll see. We'll see if it happens. It's happened here. You got it. Okay, so here's my landing page. And I'm gonna put a name in here. I'm gonna put Lola. I like Lola. Um, do, do we get a notification though, or does it just automatically go into command? Because I believe you get a notification. I don't know. We're about to find out, guys. Yeah, because I've not gotten any notifications. I didn't. I just figured it wasn't working. I got a Kelly notification on mine. Do you have? Um... Yeah, Kelly and I are fighting right now. Okay, oh. <laughs> so you have to click that I'm not a robot and then send. So I just sent it. Thanks, your information has been received. Oh look, Kelly says, dun, dun, dun. Kelly's <laughs> loading. She's thinking. Lola Franks. See, she she's not speaking to me. I gotta figure out update what's happening her. with Kelly. Update her. Oh yeah, update her. So okay. now, when I go to contacts, and don't ask me where I came up with this thing because I don't know. Um. Oh look, here's Lola. She's in my command. And the note that says cool house, which is what I wrote. Uh, KW landing page. So, and she mar she's marked as a lead. Um, That L means she's marked as a lead. Amy? So on April 10th, hold on. On, uh, on April 10th, she came into my command um, with this note and she's a lead. So if I know I did an open house on that day, then I can go in and edit her, um, her stuff and, and give her a tag. So let me see, yeah, because it doesn't have tags on it. That's what I was wondering about too. She's just marked as a lead. So I'm sorry, Teresa, you had a question? Sure, do you have to use 
um, new landing pages for each open house? Do you have to make new landing pages? Um, or can you use the same one over and over again? Well, here are my thoughts about landing pages. My recommendation would be to create a new one for each open house or each listing. And as you go through and you name the, um, so let me go back to, to the landing pages. Uh, you, can, you can name the, um, the slug, you can put the, a slug in here. So if I, do, if I go to change URL, I can change this and then you would just put the address of your open house or the listing on that. Um, because oh. when you're sending these out, if somebody goes back and clicks an old link, it's not going to take them to the place that they thought it was going to. So you you're better off cre creating new ones and then you can turn these on and off. So if Ricky sells his house on South Jackson, um, then I can turn that one off. And Which Ricky would it. really like to sell the house on South Jackson. Yes. So let's help Ricky sell this house. Um, that would be great. And um, so you can turn that off. So if somebody that you sent that, that uh, link to goes to that link again, it's not going to take them anywhere. Uh, because that house is not available anymore, which now gives them a reason to reach out to you again and say, hey, you remember the link that you sent me for that really cool house on South Jan Jackson? We are, you know, is it still available? We are looking for something just like it. When you turn that off, does it still keep the contacts, uh, the people from that open house in your contacts? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't lose any, any information at all when you turn these off and on. Okay. All it does is make that page inactive. So I'm going to turn this off again, right? And if I come here and refresh the page, it's going to give me a 404 error. Page is not available. Okay. Okay. But Lola is still in my contacts. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Any other questions or thoughts or comments? Viola? I think we're good. I'm good. Are you guys good? Thank you. Was this helpful? Very helpful. Good. Thank you, Amy. Now, now is the time for us to build our systems. Yeah. We have some a little bit extra time. We're at home. We're at least saving travel time. Build your systems. Get everyone on a 36 touch smart plan. If you want to know what that looks like, it's in the coaching folder. And get everyone on their monthly neighborhood nurtures, which will be part of your 36 touch and add people to your database as many people yep. as you can yep yeah but definitely take advantage of these smart plans i mean they're super super easy to build out and they're very very useful so um and you have 5,000 emails that you can send every month so hello I mean, kind of feels 5, like 5,000 emails? 5,000 emails a month. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, you can make oh, people hate you. Gonna cover no, we don't want to do that. But <laughs> um, hold on, because I am trying to find the, the chat, because I see a bunch of stuff on chat. Can somebody see this chat? Because I can't. Chat. Yeah, I can. Okay. All right, so Christy figured it out, said, thank you, this is great. She was asking the wrong phone number showing up on your emails. Oh, did you change it in your MyKW stuff, Christy? Probably. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, yep, okay, cool. Okay, 
Teresa, you're still on my radar to get your email fixed. Thank you. Yep. Um, all right, guys. So if um, I have one more question. Yeah. Um, this is kind of off this subject, but um, does PySync start charging you? It, they sent me an email saying my trial's almost over. Do they, they charge you? I have not used PySync. Has anybody else used PySync? I used PySync and I believe I just uploaded everything and then I thought it was turned off, but it might actually be turned on, but it, I don't know. Okay. Because I believe I deactivated mine and that's why. What do you have connected to PySync is really the question because PySync oh does everything. Well, what is it? The iCloud or Google or all or? It's the iCloud. Your iCloud? Do your mm -hmm. phone contacts save to your iCloud? Yes. Well, I, that's how I got all my contacts onto command is through I pricing them. What does it say it's going to charge you? It doesn't say it says to enter my credit card information, but I haven't done it yet. So I, would I know I don't website. pay for it. Yeah. Okay. I would go to their website and investigate what, um, what they're going to charge you and I mean, it might be that they want you to sign up for, you know, a plan that's, that's more robust than their basic plan, or maybe you have to have that. You know, I don't know. I would, I would go play investigator. Okay, I will. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I don't have a good answer for you. It's okay. Cool, anything well, else? Well, thank you, Amy. You are very this welcome. This was very helpful. Thank you. And this thank will you be very much. The recording will be put on our thing. Yeah, it'll, or um, yeah, it'll be on our YouTube channel probably by Monday. Awesome. Yeah. What is the, what to, is the, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. What is the YouTube channel? Um, what is the YouTube channel? 